Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about art. Um art is an interesting thing in the world. There are many people who create things that we like to look at. In this English lesson about art, I'll primarily be talking about visual art. Things like paintings and sculptures and I'll get into it in a bit once we get into the lesson. There are of course things like music and other things that are considered arts as well but this lesson will mostly be about the kind of art that uh, you would use if you wanted to make a nice painting like this hummingbird that you see here. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about art. So, as I said, I'm primarily in this English lesson going to be talking about visual arts. The visual arts are any type of art where you can see it. So, I will get into all the details in a bit but the visual arts can be anything such as oh, this is a little low. Let me fix this for a sec. There we go. That's where I like to see it. The visual arts are anything like paintings, sketches, drawings, sculptures. I'm kind of giving away the next part of the lesson though but the visual arts would be any type of art that you can see and appreciate. Sometimes we talk about a piece of art as a work of art. We usually use this phrase to talk about a very famous painting. You know, this is a famous work of art I believe from Van Gogh. Uh, Bedrooms at Arles I think it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not an art expert. I'm an English expert. So, um but we would consider this a work of art. Um when you are a painter and you become well known, you create a lot of works of art that people enjoy looking at. If I did a painting, I wouldn't call it a work of art. I would just call it a painting by Bob. Um but if I became a famous painter, I would certainly start to uh refer to it as that I have several works of art for sale. I would it's it's a way to it's it's a more formal way to talk about art that you've created. And then we also have the term artwork. Artwork simply refers to any drawings that are maybe used in a book. Um if I was a painter, I could say, oh, I have a lot of artwork in my studio. Um so artwork is just another way to talk about things that you have created. Things you have drawn or things you have painted. We would call that artwork. We also use it when you have like if you write a book, you might hire someone to create artwork for the book. Th- this would refer to the drawings and illustrations that would be in the book. And of course, a person who creates art is called an artist. Um there are many different types of artists in the world. This person I would say is a graffiti artist. They are making artwork on the wall of a building using paint. Um but anyone who is creative and likes to make things or to paint things or draw things, we would call them an artist. You might be a sculptor. A sculptor is someone who makes Um statues and sculptures, that's the name of the thing they make out of stone or wood or other types of material. So, painting is a very flat type of art but sculpture is very three dimensional. Uh when you have something made by a sculptor, it has size and shape. So, if you go to your local park, there might be some statues that were created by a sculptor. We would certainly refer to someone who likes to create art, someone who is creative as being artistic. You could say she's very artistic. Her paintings are amazing. He's very artistic. He has a real eye for color. He's very artistic. He does beautiful pencil sketches. So, if someone is really good at creating art, if they have talent, we would say that they are artistic. Uh and they might get that talent um naturally or they might get that talent from taking an art class. So, art classes like the class I was in the other day are classes where you learn the techniques and the methods for creating art. You'll learn how to paint with oil or with watercolors. You'll learn how to sketch with a pencil. You might learn how to create something out of crayon or clay. So, art class is a place where you go where there is usually a teacher who is very artistic 
who teaches you how to create artwork of different types. You can see these people here are in art class. They are learning how to create art. Now, you also might just be a natural. In English, this is a bigger term than just the art world but in the art world, if you were to say he's a natural or she's a natural, it means the person is able to create really cool works of art and they don't have a lot of training. They've just on their own learned how to do it. They're a very creative person and they just know how to put colors together and how to paint and how to make something beautiful. We would call that person a natural. We also use this to talk about athletes or someone who's good at anything just very easily. Um if you handed your friend a guitar and if your friend didn't have guitar lessons and they could quickly learn to play a song, you might say, oh, uh he's a natural. Different types of artwork. So, I've kind of mentioned most of these. There is something called drawing where you simply take a pencil or pen or something we call a marker, maybe a crayon or a pencil crayon and you simply take a piece of paper and you draw something. You look at something and try to reproduce it or if you're more creative, you try to draw something in a very artistic way. So, drawing is certainly one way that people create art. You might like to sketch. This is a sketch. Um so, I've just used it as a verb and a noun. Did you notice that? He likes to sketch sketches. You could say that. A sketch is usually a quick drawing usually done with a pencil. Um and then if you were to start to color it and refine it and improve it, we would probably refer to it as a drawing. But if you just sit down and simply take a pencil and quickly sketch uh, a picture onto a piece of paper, we would refer to it as a sketch. Um and we would use the verb sketch to talk about it. So, you might sit down to sketch a sketch if you have some spare time. And then we also have of course, painting. So, when you like to paint, you will create a painting. You can see this person has their paint brushes and they have either paper or canvas and they are creating a painting. Um you could also say that they are painting. Notice how we can flip these words around a little bit. Um in art class, they are going to be painting today. They are going to be painting their paintings. You could say that as well in English. Little tricky but that is how the English language works. Uh as I referred to before, a sculptor makes sculptures. Should I pronounce that again? A sculptor, let me zip back really quickly. A sculptor creates sculptures. So, this is a sculpture of a lion. Uh I think this might be in France. I don't know. I should have looked this up but a sculpture again is a three-dimensional, a 3D uh piece of art or work of art. So, you take marble or stone or wood and you use a hammer and chisel and you kind of fashion that material into something that looks more realistic like this line. So, there you have a sculpture. Uh I think this line is in France. I usually know where my pictures are from but I forget with this one. Um and then we also have something called a statue and you might be wondering uh what's the difference between a statue and a sculpture? Well, I didn't know this until yesterday. I just learned something new. Apparently, a statue is a sculpture of a person or animal. In order for something to be called a statue, at least my understanding of this, I could be wrong, a statue needs to be a person, uh, an image of a person or an image of an animal and then it can be called a statue. I didn't know that till yesterday. Photography. So, art isn't just about painting. It isn't just about sculpture. It isn't just about um making things in a creative way. Sometimes, it's about using technology and there's two types of technology in particular. Um well, I guess one. There's the still camera and the video camera. If you're using a camera like this, you are doing what's called photography. You are taking pictures of things around you. You have an eye 
for looking at the world and framing it in a way where you can take a beautiful picture. Um it's definitely an art. The ability to take pictures that are beautiful is definitely an art but you also do need like I said some technical skills but photography very cool. Um I would say Jen is very much into photography and she's very good at it. There's also filmmaking or making videos or videography. Uh you can be a videographer um but I would just say the artistic way to talk about video would be to use the term filmmaking and the term filmmaker. By the way, someone who likes photography is a photographer. Someone who likes filmmaking is a filmmaker. So, if you like to use your video camera to make films, you would be a filmmaker. If you like to tell stories using film, we would say that you are a filmmaker. Very, very cool type of art. And we also have digital art. So, this didn't exist 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I wonder when digital art started. But digital art is the use of a computer to either manipulate images, create images, um put images together like this picture here is a combination of images. Digital art is very, very cool. In fact, I referred to earlier I said I like modern art. I think I like digital art right now. Uh in fact, right now there are computers that make images and people call that uh AI art, artificial intelligence art. I'm not sure that's real art. I think people have to make art for it to be real. But digital art is art made using a computer either creating images, enhancing images, making them better, manipulating images, changing them or combining images in different ways. Digital art. An artist, a painter will use what's called an easel. Now, this isn't a very good picture here of an easel. The easel is the wooden thing that this artist has put their canvas on. So, if you look behind the white canvas, you will see a piece of wood sticking out the top and a couple wooden legs at the bottom. Uh this is what's called an easel. An artist will set up their easel on the street outside, maybe in their studio and then they will use that to hold the paper or canvas or whatever they are painting on. So, that is an easel. They will of course, if you are a painter, you will use a brush. You can just call it a brush. You can also call it a paintbrush. Um artists have lots of different kinds of paintbrushes. Thick paintbrushes, thin paintbrushes, small paintbrushes, large paintbrushes um and depending on what type of paint they are using, they might have different kinds of brushes as well. But I think we most often just call it a brush. A painter will use brushes. When you say paintbrush, it just feels like too many words. It's very common but um I think if I was to talk about an artist, I would say um the artist is coming later today with their easel and their brushes and their paints and they're going to paint something. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're just doing a simple drawing or sketch, you will probably use a pencil. This person has what's called, I think it might be an HB pencil or a number two pencil. I don't know the exact specifics but there are different types of pencils for doing artwork or sketching or drawing and I think it 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 the It's the softness of the lead in the pencil I think that changes but this person has decided to use a pencil to draw a little cat. And of course, when children are young and even older artists, um when children are young, they often use crayons. A crayon is um a colored type of pencil that's very soft. It ha- it's usually made of wax or some other soft material. Um but our children always had crayons when they were younger. In fact, in Ontario, Canada, when you go to a restaurant with your children, if it's a restaurant where you sit down, the waiter might bring crayons and some paper for your kids to draw on or color on while you're waiting for your food if they're really young. So, anyways, a crayon is kind of a waxy writing tool. Um that is most often used by kids but sometimes used by adult artists as well. 
And then we have chalk. This is something that teachers are used to but some artists also use chalk because it allows them to use these soft nice colors. If you look at these chalk colors, they have what's called a pastel look. They're these soft muted colors. Uh artists who work with chalk might even work outside. They might use chalk on the pavement or on the sidewalk. There um is a type of artist called a sidewalk artist um who might actually do artwork on a sidewalk and then when it rains, the art disappears. But chalk would be something people would use if they are creating artwork outside on a building, on a wall or on the pavement or the sidewalk. This is what's called a painter's palette. So, a painter's palette is anything flat where the painter can put all of their different paints and then they can use their brush and they can mix the colors together to make new colors on the palette and then they can paint on their canvas. So, this painter's palette is well used. By the way, palette is also used to refer to um the colors you use when you design something. So, when you create a painting, your color palette may be oranges and browns. That might be the palette you're using. So, it is it does have a couple of different uses. A painter will often paint on a canvas. Hey, this is actually a better picture of an easel as well. So, this white um flat material is called canvas and it is sitting on an easel. So, the artist has a blank canvas. So, there's nothing on it yet. They have attached it to a wooden frame and put it on an easel and now they are ready to paint. So, let's talk a little bit about where art can be seen. So, the word exhibition and exhibit are kind of used interchangeably in my part of the world. You will need to look up the meanings of these two words depending on where you are. I think they're slightly different in Britain in uh, British English but for me, I could go to an art exhibition. I could go to an art exhibit. I could go to an art show. All of these mean pretty much the same thing in my part of the world. In some parts of the world though, an art show might have a number of art exhibits at the show. So, anyways, for me, an exhibition or an exhibit is a place where they show art. I could say to Jen, do you wanna go to, there's an art exhibit this week in Toronto with uh, the works of Van Gogh. Do you want to go? And so, we could go to the art exhibit and see all of those paintings. So, it's a big huge area where they have put all the paintings on the wall or sculptures or whatever type of art. So, for me, I could go to an art exhibition. I could go to an art exhibit. Um I could go to an art exhibition that has lots of exhibits in it. So, different kinds of art. So, it's uh, somewhat interchangeable but uh, definitely look these words up to get a good sense and put the word art in front. Like, look up art exhibition, art exhibit art show. So, an art show is the same type of thing. Um in our area, there are a lot of wineries and there is a lot of beautiful places to visit in the fall and so, we also have art galleries that will have art shows every once in a while. I think there's actually an art show this weekend where you can go and see different types of art from different painters, from different artists. Very cool. And of course, the biggest place, the most formal place that you can go to look at art would be a museum. I believe this is the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. So, if you are ever in Holland and you want to see the um the works of art that were created by Vincent Van Gogh, you could go to the Van Gogh Museum to see some of them. His artwork is found in a lot of places but this is one of the best places to go from my understanding. Anyone here who is from the Netherlands maybe can tell us but uh the Van Gogh Museum would be one of the places I would love to go someday. I just think that would be really cool and really fun. So, there's also something called an art gallery. So, there is a town close to me that has a few art galleries. An art gallery is a place where um you will see art maybe from one artist or two artists or four or five. An art gallery is a place where you can go to see the art 
but it's often a place you can also go to buy the art. The art gallery that is closest to me sells um art from local artists. So, you can go to the art gallery to see the art but you can also buy a piece of art especially if you are an art collector. So, an art collector is someone who loves art so much that they like to buy works of art to either display in their home or maybe to just keep. Maybe they are using it as an investment or maybe they just like to have art everywhere in their house or at their business. So, an art collector is someone who obviously has money and they have enough money to go out and buy pieces of art or works of art so that they can put it in their art collection. So, an art collector will then have an art collection. They will have their works of art displayed in one room in their house. Maybe they'll have them all stored somewhere. Maybe they don't have them displayed but they definitely have an art collection. Um I don't have an art collection. (laughs) I don't in English we would say I don't have that kind of money. You have to have a certain level of not wealth but you have to have a certain amount of expendable income we would probably say. Extra money that you don't need for food or rent or other things. So, I mentioned earlier about different art forms. There are considered to be seven different art forms. An art form is a kind of art. So, I mentioned painting. I mentioned sculpture. There's literature. So, writing really good stories. Writing can be an art form as well. Architecture. Let me say that again. Architecture. The design of beautiful buildings is considered an art form as well. Cinema which is the same as filmmaking. A filmmaker makes films and cinema, the creation of movies and film is considered an art form as well as music and live theater or theater. Now, this is the American spelling of theater. I actually spell it slightly differently but painting, sculpture, literature, architecture, cinema, music and theater are considered the seven main art forms. There's some there's other art forms but these are considered the seven main ones. I know Freddie mentioned that Um comic strips are considered the ninth art form. I wonder what the eighth art form is then. Be interesting to find out. We also have what's called a patron of the arts. A patron of the arts is different than an art collector. It's also a person who has a lot of extra money. In English, we would say they have a lot of money and they don't know what to do with it. (laughs) But a patron of the arts would be someone who directly or indirectly supports an artist with money. So, they might actually buy paintings from the artist to support them. They might actually um give money for the artist to live somewhere and make art for a year. In the a long time ago, kings and queens were sometimes patron of patrons of the arts. They would pay an artist to live and create works of art for them. So, a patron would be the guy in the gray. The artist is the guy in the yellow. The patron is the guy who says, I will give you money so that you don't have to work so that you can create works of art. And lastly, people asked a few times about the type of art I am able to create. I did not make this but this is called a collage. To me, a collage is the simplest way to create art. And it's really the only works of art I've ever created. Mostly when I was younger and in school. A collage is a collection of images. They can be photographs. They can be pictures that you find on the internet and then you put them together in a really, really nice pattern or nice way. So, a collage to me is the simplest form of art and the only form of art that Bob the Canadian is actually good at. I've made a few cool collages in my life. So, again, collage. That's how you would pronounce that. A collection of images.